someone complained that I drink too much in one of the comments. I thought that was hilarious. So, uh, red wine this time. <laughs> Hi, my name is Jonas. This is Sublime Media. And on this channel, I talk about records and record related stuff like today. When I'm going to do an entire video of just jazz. Most of it will be reissues. I think I have two records that is original pressings. And they are without a doubt not rare at all. Anyone can get them, but it's taken me so damn long to, especially for one of them, uh, to uh, crawl into my collection. But uh, but here we are. So yeah, I'm gonna drink some more, and uh, you have to watch the intro because that's how it works. So play music or whatever I usually say. Yeah, I also have a record shop called sublimedia.se. Check it out. It's in Swedish and mostly for the Swedish audience, but I sent to all over the world from 15 and up. I just sent records to Germany, Italy, US and Australia. I think I, s I sent one to Australia. I I've been on like eBay and Discogs for like 20 years, so so uh, I'm not new to, to sending uh, abroad, but yeah, so let me know. So let's jump right into it. 1962. Yep, that's the year. This was not. Yeah, this. Uh, okay. Roy Haynes' uh, Quartet Out of the Afternoon, featuring Roland Kirk, Henry Grimes, and Tommy, Fla uh, Tommy Flanagan. And, ah, uh, shit, again, a uh, impulse record. But which version is this? I have no idea. I don't know. When it comes to shrink wraps, I hate shrink wraps. So I rip them off right away. And I have no use of hype stickers. Uh, very seldom I save a hype sticker and put it into the record. Because all the information is out there. So I don't need it. Some collect it. I don't. But in this case, it would be nice. Because Impulse Records are right, uh, right about now all over the map. When it comes to their releases and licensing. It's everywhere so i think just this month maybe the, yeah the month of january at least i think we have like 15 releases of this single lp by different sort of pressing plants and labels and stuff like that this is the acoustic sound version and they have done a tremendous job in releasing the impulse catalog and i wish so much that impulse just left it there like just let Acoustic Sound uh, handle the catalog cut by, by Ryan K. Smith, uh, ass wiped by Shad Kassam, and pressed by Sterling Sound if they do anything like that. I don't know. And I, I think it's like those nice uh, fancy pants uh, covers. What Impulse is, I mean, in my opinion, like my theory is that Impulse was sitting there at his office and had a stroke and then started to just give out licenses to everyone. And I'm going to talk more about this. So the music, this is great. I've been looking for this for so long. Uh, back in the day, I wanted an original press and got too expensive and I didn't want a sort of 90s press or whatever. So I just waited and the opportunity came to, to buy this. It's not... Uh, super expensive but it's not a cheap record uh, and it sounds like a dream like with everything that acoustic sounds put out it's a dream so i'm so glad that i jumped on this one if you want a review go to 10 minute record reviews they uh alan did a, a great job in reviewing this and especially his talk about roland kirk and his playing on this one is so entertaining to listen to and i i agree it's i mean roland kirk is playing beautifully on this one and I never thought that I would put beautiful and Roland Kirk's playing at the, in the same sentence because he is the freest of the free uh, but in this case yeah it's really good so let's just segue to a company that knows their shit and has it all like uh, it's Blue Note this is the right touch with Duke Pearson 1967 uh, yeah, Duke Pearson, for me, I have zero, no, no, 1.1% experience because 
I got a hold of the record that came after this, I think, which is called Introducing Duke Pearson's Big Band. Also on Blue Note, not my thing. Like, really not my thing. Too big of a band, too dull. Uh, I think I listened to it once and then I sold it right away. Even think I sold it for a loss. So, why did I get this? I, yeah, I, I think... For once, it was on sale, so I didn't pay full price for it. Uh, second, uh, I think that the lineup was interesting. Freddie Hubbard, uh, James Baldings, Stella Turretine, Gene Taylor. Uh, so I want to, to explore the record, and I'm really glad I did, because this is beautiful. Really, really beautiful. And we aren't blessed with color session photos in the Tone Poets every day. So that's also a nice touch. This is a great one. Not the best Tone Poet I've ever heard, but... With that Tone Poet label, it's almost like a guarantee that you will, if not love it, you will find it interesting. For me, it's like that anyway. I can buy any, it seems like that anyway, I can buy any Tone Poet and I will find good stuff in there. Mm. Oh shit, that's good. Okay, so let's go back to Impulse, shall we? Here we have it. This is Albert Eidler's Love Cry. Uh, man, I forgot to hear this was released because I was so mad when I got this and played it. I, uh, fuck it, I don't even care. Like, okay. So, what we have here is a Third Man Records release. Uh, this is Verve by Request. And as I said, I, I tear off every single shrink wrap that comes inside of the house here inside of the doors but uh, in this case it would be nice to have that slab of uh, of a sticker as a warning to everyone not to dabble in these releases because this sucks like really sucks in so many levels like it's there's so many levels on this sucky onion I don't know where to begin first of all to, to shit to sit down and just make this pile of shit on on this fantastic label which is Impulse Records is I can't even I mean and and the cover artwork it's unfocused it's blushy it's I don't even know where to to uh, how how to pronounce it it's it feels cheap in your hands flimsy and cheap. I mean, even if you put this in your shelf, it will smear out with yellow on the, the spine. It's just poorly assembled, poorly made. So let's go to the record. What we get is a record in an ordinary white inner sleeve not polylined inner sleeve a paper sleeve so the record is scuffed from the second it l leaves jack white's off it looks like something that a truck ran over and you have to replace the inner sleeve right away uh, but there's also so much dirt shit and paper sort of thingies on it that no one would dare to drop a needle on this record because you will ruin your entire stereo equipment. No, the first thing you have to do is invest in ultrasonic uh, cleaner just to play it, just to, to like clean this to be able to play it at all. I don't even think that a Crossley would play this record without cleaning it and then we come to the music and the pressing and the quality of the sound coming out of your speakers and again it's like even cleaned it's like i mean this is as expensive as any release you i mean i paid uh, almost as much for this as i've been paying for uh, somewhere between a classic series and a tone poet. It's not as expensive as a tone poet, but but definitely more than a classic series. And the music and the audio 
quality that you get out of this is just like uh, I have heard wax time and dole records sound better than this which brings me back to impulse I mean giving this to Jack White saying that he should press this is just sad uh, I mean he's not doing a great job he's not even doing a good job he's not even doing a job pressing this uh, so what is impulse thing here i mean they have such a great label obviously they are licensing it to people that know their shit and can make great sounding records out of their uh, their uh, catalog but this and with others i mean jack white and third man records is not the only pressing a company that that uh, uh, makes shit sounding uh, pressings of these. I had a uh, Alice Coltrane record from 2009 or something like that. That was, I think it was Universal that had licensed that and put out. And it was just like uh, the same treatment like this uh, with uh, Ordinary Paper Steve and stuff like that. So, I mean, it's not only uh, Jack White's fault, even if I... I yeah, but maybe it's it's Jack's fault. Maybe yeah, maybe it's Jack White's fault. Maybe it is because Jack White is famous for loving vinyl records. He is really holding the vinyl up in the air, saying this is the way to present and listen to music. So why is he doing it like this? I have no idea. Like, I should do a, a separate video about this or maybe a uh, open forum so everyone can pitch in. I have no idea. It feels like this is taking up way too much time. So while I'm ranting, I just want to share a story. This is going to be too long, but yeah, I'm, I, I'm drinking wine, so I don't give a fuck. I went into town uh, the other day to a high fee shop and and there was a young guy standing behind the counter and I did my thing. Everything in there was vinyl, 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 but streamed like you can stream vinyl to active speakers, you know, that kind of story. So I needed a thing to put a speaker up on the wall. So we uh, talked and, and I just asked the guy because I didn't see anything. I asked the guy like, do you have records do you sell vinyl records and he said yeah yeah we have we have a crate uh, over there just check it out it's uh, audio file pressings just so i went over there and gave it a go <laughs> now right away and i've been there for like 10 minutes i paid and everything i was going to to go but but right away when starting flipping through these records the first record I saw was Best of Fleetwood Mac, like, and the next one was a run of the mill sort of Dark Side of the Moon thing. Um, and I turned to the guy and I say, what is this? And he says, it's records. And I said, well, why do you hold this shit? And he says, no, that's not shit. It's all the file pressings. It's 180 gram. <sighs> and I say, hold my beer. So I put down like 10, 15 minutes on lecturing this guy about audio file pressings not being only 180 gram. You can't slab a sticker on a record and calling it audio file quality just because it's 180 gram. <clears throat> so I have never been so... I've never felt so good about myself when I went out of there. And I knew that he was going to go home and, and beat his wife and maybe drink too much whiskey that evening just because the horrible, horrible customer that he had. Uh, but I was so happy with me lecturing him. A real old man moment for me. And it's like that because on the hype sticker of the Jack White record it said audio file quality pressing 180 gram and I'm thinking to myself like who are they trying to fool but I guess that when average Joe walks into a store that has vinyls up on the, 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 the wall and a poster with a girl standing holding a 
a record. Um, and everyone's talking about how records is the new thing right now. Maybe you can fool them by charging 50 euro for a dark side of the moon, which you could buy on Swedish Best Buy the uh, same afternoon or, or uh, tar Swedish Target or whatever it's called on the other side of the world. Uh, so yeah, rant over. So yeah, uh, leaving that behind us, moving forward for now is this the on right uh, trio nice and tasty this is a new land release a new land is is fairly new to me i haven't uh, bought that many i haven't listened to that many but i'm going to correct that because this is is uh, like sound wise a dream come true this is master director from the original stereo analog tapes by kevin gray uh, 12 inch insert with rare photos and a downbeat review Printed and pressed at Palace in 180 gram vinyl, which is equal to audio file quality, uh, obviously. And housed in a deluxe reverse board jacket, officially licensed. So this is how you press records, right? This is also like, this is the same price. I paid, I, I think I paid exactly the same for this as the third man, man uh, records. And this is everything done right. Unfortunately, in my, in, in my humble opinion, this music isn't as good as Albert Eiler's Love Cry. Uh, and Love Cry isn't, isn't even Eiler's best by any means, but it's still better than 99% of every other jazz record. Uh, but this is just a mediocre record. A 3 out of 5 stars, like, it's, it's good. It's staying in the collection, especially for the sound quality. And I can't wait to get my hands on more uh, New Land uh, material. Really, really, really nice. Everything done right. Next one, and this is actually on a turntable, so no record here. Uh, this is uh, Nigeria by Grant Green, and you have a, a killer lineup here. Uh, Sonny Clark, Sam Jones, and Art Blakey on this one. This was released in 1980 for the first time. Uh, recorded 19, like 70, 67, something like that, 64, 67, but shelved. Uh, released in 1980 on that super ugly record covers that Blue Note had in the 80s. Man, I wish that that part of history was just erased. Like, let's just forget about it. Let's not talk about that, because if we don't talk about it, it doesn't exist. I'm so glad that they got the Tom Poet sort of treatment with this new uh, more in the line of the guess the 50s 60s miles reed kind of things anyway when it comes to the, uh, to the music on this one yeah inside uh, when it comes to the music on this one this is not only one of my absolute favorite grant green records but it's fastly growing to be one of my favorite tone poet releases this is a killer record i mean sound wise it's one of the best that I've heard. Um, and music-wise, it's great. None of the uh, tunes are penned by any of the musicians. Some of them are standard. I think that it was a Cole Porter song. And I think they they uh, start with Aerogen. Yep, that's how you pronounce it. By uh, Sonny Rollins. Uh, so maybe they can focus on just doing something with these tunes by other guys i don't know and grant green is playing his heart out like really really good and the audio quality really helps it because it's right there in your face uh, and his tone is perfect man highly recommended like highly highly recommended that was put out in 2020 and i don't i haven't read that much about it so again i took almost like took a chance on it and i'm so glad i did so yeah uh that's it when it comes to the reissues. Uh, I have two original pressings that I want to show you before I, I leave you alone. This is a first press of Leroy Jenkins, four players only. The Jazz Composers Orchestra is playing on this one also. And, I mean, the lineup here is bonkers. There's 18 free jazz people playing on this one. So you can just imagine the sound you get through the speakers. But 
more on that uh, in a minute. You have uh, Joseph Bowie, uh, let's see here, Anthony Braxton, Bill Davis, uh, Sharon Freeman, David Holland, uh, Morris McIntyre, Leo Smith, uh, Sharon, uh, Charles Shaw, and Dewey Redman. Leroy Jenkins feels like um, he's a violin player, uh, born in the 30s, this from 1975, I think. And this is the first record as him as a leader. So he's not an anonymous. I mean, he's played with uh, the, the biggest names in US uh, free jazz in the 60s. But here he got the opportunity to not only lead, but also have a composition uh, to be played by the Jazz Composers Orchestra. I think it even was a, a commissioned piece. Yeah, they look like that. This, this is, uh, but don't be fooled by 18 people playing on this one, because it never feels like that. Uh, I read a review where someone said that, that uh, the, the first side is a little bit more bigger uh, more sounding but uh, when you get to the second side uh, if I understood correctly because it's been a while since I played it uh, it's more sort of sections of players so you, everyone's not playing at the same time and they trade off different solos it's a great piece it's a great record and this is not expensive at all but it's taken me like 10 years to hunt this uh, down for whatever reason. So yeah, highly recommend it if you're into the freer stuff. And last but not least, this is, and I've shown this before, I think this is the third time I own this. And let's see if it stays in the collection, or uh, how long it stays. This is Aurora Borealis, yeah, uh, with Sabu Martinez. So Sabu Martinez is a percussion player, and I don't think that he's and he played with Art Blakey and went to Sweden in the 70s and recorded, played with different guys. And this is one of the releases that he had. So this is a little bit harder to find. But I've met, during the, the years that I've been collecting, I've seen this go way, way down in price and way, way up. So it's a roller coaster of a record. Like three years can pass and it's worth yeah, or it costs nothing and then three year can pass and it's up there again in like the rare records um, I don't know if it's the coop label because they didn't release much so maybe that helps it go up in price uh, and maybe it's the big band sort of treatment with just in my opinion so so musicians that helps it to be a little bit less expensive at times when it comes to the music, in my opinion, this is maybe a two and a half, three. If I'm uh, having a good day, it's a it's a three. But it's a cool one to to uh, have in the collection. It's it's like, yeah, somewhat rare. And side note, uh, the first time I got this, I bought it at a place south in Sweden, and I saw it on on Facebook or Instagram or whatever back in the day. That they had this, so I gave them gave them a call. They said that Sabu Martinez's son, who's still living in Sweden, uh, was inside of the store and um, saw the record, and he put it aside to come in to pay for it and buy it later on. But uh, he did it like a week before I I called, so um, uh, he hadn't returned. So they said, uh, like, give us a call in a week. Have, if he hasn't paid, you get it. So I gave him a call a week later, and yeah, he didn't pay. So I got to buy it, got it home, played it. But I've always felt pretty sort of, like, bad for doing that. Like, Sabo Martinez's son has an interest, obviously, in his dad's sort of record. And, and uh, yeah seemed anyway like he didn't have the music so for me just sweeping in there and stealing it from Sabo Martinez's son feels a little bit sucky so if you're watching this Sabo Martinez's son if you're still interested in this I will send this for free to you uh, so just give me a, a, a call or PM me or anything and I'll see that this is this uh, gets in the mail to you uh, but you will never see this so yeah into the collection it goes but I feel a little bit less bad right now so I'm gonna drink my wine I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna uh, enjoy time with my wife 
and I'll talk to you all in my next video. Have a great day, everyone. Bye. So you made it to the end. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't and give this a thumbs up because it really helps. It really does. Now, if you want more content, then just look me up on Instagram. I put stuff up there before, uh, before YouTube. So a little bit of uh, what's coming up, uh, so to speak. Again, thank you so much and have a great day, everyone. I'll talk to you in my next video.